Hi, this is Abdullah Katan. Here I am introducing my uh, part three video about the GSO eyepieces. Um, in the previous video of the GSO eyepieces, part one and two, I gave a false information about the apparent field of view. Um, what I really got is that comments from uh, viewers that they told me that the apparent field of view information was not correct. So what I did is that I retested my eyepieces. Now, when I, I t test my eyepieces, I compare it with binoculars that I have. I have a 6.5 degrees field of view binocular and I have a five degrees field of view binocular and a three degrees field of view binoculars and I make a comparison and I test my eyepieces. What I really found that uh, in retesting my eyepieces is that I truly gave the viewers false information about the apparent field of view of each eyepiece of the GSO. Now the GSO do not write on their eyepieces what is the apparent field of view of their eyepiece. Um, what happens is that stores uh, who are selling the stores which are selling these eyepieces they give customers false information about the apparent field of view and uh, my testing was not really accurate it's not a scientific test it's just an ordinary test but when I got the comments from viewers I said to myself that I must retest my eyepieces and know the accurate um, apparent field of view. So when I tested the 50 millimeter here, I said that it uh, here it says 50 millimeter. Um, I said that it has uh, 60 degrees apparent field of view. And after retesting, I found that it was uh, 50 degrees apparent field of view or less, less than 50 degrees apparent field of view and this one here the 42 millimeter after testing it I said that it had a 68 degrees well it didn't really had a 68 degrees apparent field of view it had something like uh, more than 50 degrees maybe 55 degrees something like that um, it's about 55 degrees apparent field of view or maybe 50 like it's like 50 or 55 something between that um, here the 30 millimeter eyepiece um, I said that it had a 68 degrees apparent field of view and after testing it guess what it turned to be more than 70 degrees apparent field of view not 68 more than 70 degrees apparent field of view and also this here, the 20 millimeter eyepiece, after testing it, uh, I said at the first it was 68 degrees apparent field of view. And after testing it, I found that it's just like about 65 or under 65 degrees apparent field of view. And also here the 15 millimeter, the 15 millimeter. I said that it was 68 degrees and it wasn't 68 degrees. After testing it, I found that it was just like about 65 or less than apparent field of view. Um, after that, I bought this uh, GSO Barlow. It says here ED two times Barlow lens fully multi-coated Taiwan. This ED Barlow, when I used it, uh, I was really surprised. It's really uh, state-of-the-art. This Barlow is something incredible. It's a two-inch Barlow. 
Um, when I tried it with the uh, 50 millimeter right here, the 50 millimeter, when I tried it with it, it really, uh, it, it changed it to a 25 millimeter, but the eye relief from um, a 30 millimeter, it changed to a 60 millimeter eye relief. It had a very, very long eye relief, which is very annoying. So I don't recommend using this Barlow with the 50 millimeter eyepiece. When I used it with a 42 millimeter eyepiece, it changed from 42 millimeter to a 21 millimeter eyepiece, and the viewing was incredible. Um, without the Barlow, this eyepiece had 10% distortion at the edges. When I used the Barlow, it had zero distortion at the edges. It was a clear, crisp image from edge to edge. And here with the 30 millimeter eyepiece, when I used the Barlow, it changed to a 15 millimeter eyepiece. And this 30 millimeter eyepiece uh, had 10% distortion at the edges, but using the Barlow, I found that it had zero distortion at the edges, which is really, really uh, uh, perfect. And here, the 20 millimeter eyepiece, using the Barlow, I it changed it from 20 millimeter to a 10 millimeter eyepiece. And uh, this had before the Barlow, it had 20% distortion at the edges, and using the Barlow, it had zero distortion at the edges. It was a clear, crisp image from edge to edge. And also here, the 15 millimeter eyepiece, using the Barlow, it changed to a 7.5 millimeter eyepiece, and also zero distortion at the edges. Now, what I found that, this uh, Barlow is not just a magnifier. It says here uh, two times. It magnifies is two times. It's not just a magnifier. It's a corrector. It corrects distortion. So it has two functions. Number one, it magnifies. And number two, it corrects distortion. So I just really really was amazed i was i was amazed with this barlow it, it is absolutely uh, a piece of art this barlow is something uh, really really unbelievable it's so uh, accurate and it gives you very good um, uh, viewing for your eyepieces um, at the end of the video, um, I would like to say that, um, and what I really recommend, um, I recommend uh, this Barlow very uh, for uh, each astronomer. It is a state of the art. It's something absolutely perfect, number one. Uh, you can't go wrong with this Barlow. And I also recommend uh, this eyepiece the 50 millimeter eyepiece which is uh, um, ha which has clear crisp image from edge to edge and zero distortion um, and this Barlow you can use it with any eyepiece that you have it's a two inch eyepiece and also has an adapter right here as you can see it has an adapter for uh, one and a quarter of an inch. You can use a one and a quarter of an inch eyepiece and or you can use a two inch eyepiece both ways and uh, it's a uh, state of the art. It is really good. It functions 100% perfect. Um, I, and this is my review about the GSO eyepieces and clear skies.